One of the challenges of machine translation is that given a French sentence, there could be multiple English translations that are equally good translations of that French sentence. So how do you evaluate a machine translation system if there are multiple equally good answers? Unlike, say, image recognition, where there's one right answer, you can just measure accuracy. If there are multiple great answers, how do you measure accuracy? The way this is done conventionally is with something called the blue score. So in this optional video, I want to share with you, I want to give you a sense of how the blue score works. Let's say you are given a French sentence, Le chat est sur le tapis. And um, you are given a reference, human-generated translation of this, which is the cat is on the mat. But there are multiple pretty good translations of this. So different human, different person might translate it as there is a cat on the mat. And both of these are actually just fine, perfectly fine translations of the French sentence. What the blue score does is Given a machine-generated translation, it allows you to automatically compute a score that measures how good is that machine translation. And the intuition is, so long as the machine-generated translation is pretty close to any of the references provided by humans, then it will get a high blue score. Blue, by the way, stands for um, bilingual evaluation understudy. So in the theater world, an understudy is someone that um, learns the role of a more senior actor so they can take over the role of the more senior actor if necessary. And uh, motivation for blue and uh, motivation for blue is that um, Whereas you could ask human evaluators to evaluate the machine translation system, the blue score is an understudy, uh, could be a substitute for having humans evaluate every output of a machine translation system. So the blue score was due to Kishore Papineni, Salim Rukas, Todd Ward, and Wei Jing Zhu. Uh, this paper has been incredibly influential and is actually quite a readable and is actually quite a readable paper. So I encourage you to take a look if you have time. So the intuition behind the blue score is we're going to look at the machine generated output and see if the types of words it generates appear in at least one of the human generated references. And so these human-generated references would be provided as part of the dev set or as part of the test set. Now, let's look at a somewhat extreme example. Let's say that the machine translation system, um, I'm abbreviating machine translation as MT. So the machine translation or the MT output is D, 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 D. So this is a clearly a pretty terrible translation. So one way to measure how good the machine translation output is, is to look at each of the words in the output and see if it appears in the references. And so um, this could be called a precision of the machine translation output. And in this case, there are seven words in the machine translation output. And every one of these seven words appears in either reference one or reference two. Right? So the word the appears in both references. So each of these words looks like a pretty good word to include. So this will have a precision of 7 over 7. It looks like it's a great precision. So this is why the basic precision measure of what fraction of the words in the empty output also appear in the references, this is not a particularly useful measure because it seems to imply that this empty output has very high precision. So instead, what we're going to use is a modified precision measure in which we will give each word credit only up to the maximum number of times it appears in um, the reference sentences. So in reference one, the word the appears twice. In reference two, the word the appears just once. So two is bigger than one. And so we're going to say that um, the word the gets credit up to twice. So with a modified precision, we will say that um, it gets a score of 
two out of seven because out of seven words will give it a two credits or um, for appearing um so here the denominator is the count of the number of times the word d appears um the seven words in total and the numerator is the count of the number of times the word d appears but we clip this count and we take a max so we clip this count at two so this gives us the modified precision measure now so far we've been looking at words in isolation in the blue score you don't want to just look at isolated words you maybe want to look at pairs of words as well let's define a portion of the blue score on bigrams and bigrams just means pairs of words appearing next to each other so now let's see how we could use bigrams to define the blue score and uh, this will just be a portion of the final blue score and we'll take unigrams or single words as well as bigrams which means pairs of words into account as well as maybe even longer uh, sequences of words such as trigrams which means uh, three words appearing together so um let's continue our example from before we have the same reference one and reference two but now let's say the machine translation or the MT system has a slightly better output you know the cat the cat on the mat still not a great translation but maybe better than the last one so here the possible biograms are well there's the cat um i'm gonna ignore case and then there's cat d there's another biogram and then uh there's d cat again but i've already had that so let's skip that and then cat on is the next one and then on the and the map so these are the bigrams in the machine translation output and so let's count up how many times each of these bigrams appear um, the cat appears twice cat d appears once and the others all appear just once and then finally let's define the clip count so count and then subscript clip and to define that let's take this column of numbers but give our algorithm credit only up to the maximum number of times that that biogram appears in either reference one or reference two so the cat appears a maximum of once in uh, either of the references so i'm going to clip that count to one cat d well it doesn't appear in reference one or reference two so i clip that to zero uh, cat on yep that appears once we give it credit for once on d appears once give that credit for once and d mat appears once so these are the clipped counts we're taking all the counts and clipping them really uh, reducing them to be no more than the number of times that biogram appears in at least one of the references and then finally our modified bigram precision will be um, the sum of the count clips so that's one two three four divided by the total number of bigrams that's two three four five six so four out of six or two-thirds is the um, modified precision on bigrams so let's just formalize this a little bit further uh, with what we had developed with on unigrams we defined this modified precision computed on unigrams as um, p subscript one so p stands for precision and the subscript one here means we're referring to unigrams but that is defined as sum over the unigrams so that just means uh, sum over the words that appear in the machine translation output so this is called y hat of count clip of that unigram divided by sum overall unigrams in the machine translation output of count number of counts of that unigram right and so this was the uh, what we had gotten as i guess as two out of seven uh two slides back so the one here refers to unigram meaning we're looking at single words in isolation 
um, you can also define Pn as the n-gram version instead of a unigram, for, you have n-gram. So this would be sum over the n-grams in the machine translation output of count clip of that n-gram divided by sum over n grams of the count of that n gram. And so this, uh, these um, precisions, or these modified precision scores measured on unigrams or on bigrams, which we did on the previous slide, or on trigrams, which are uh, triples of words, um, or even higher values of n for other n-grams, this allows you to measure the degree to which the machine translation output is similar or maybe overlaps with the references. And one thing that you could probably convince yourself of is if the empty output is exactly the same as either reference 1 or reference 2, then all of these values, P1 and P2 and so on, they'll all be equal to 1.0. So to get a um, precision or a modified precision of 1.0, you just have to be exactly equal to one of the references. And sometimes it's possible to achieve this even if you aren't exactly the same as any of the references, but kind of combine them in a way that uh, hopefully still results in a good translation. Finally, Finally, let's put this together to form the uh, final blue score. So P subscript N is the blue score computed on N grams only, or also the uh, modified precision computed on N grams only. And, and by convention, to compute one number, you compute P1, P2, P3, and P4, and combine them together using the following formula. Um, it's going to be the average, so sum from n equals 1 to 4 of pn, and divide that by 4. So basically taking the average. Um, by convention, the blue score is defined as e to the this, and exponentiation is a linear operate. Exponentiation is a strictly monotonically um, increasing operation. And, and then we actually adjust this with one more factor called the Uh, BP penalty. So BP stands for a uh, brevity penalty. The details maybe aren't super important, but to just give you a sense, it turns out that if you output very short translations, it's easier to get high precision because probably most of the words you appear, probably most of the words you output appear in the references. So, but we don't want translations that are very short. Um, so the BP or the brevity penalty is an adjustment factor that penalizes translation systems that output translations that are too short. So the formula for the brevity penalty is the following. Um, is equal to one if your machine translation system actually outputs things that are uh, longer than the human-generated reference outputs, and otherwise is some formula like that that um, overall penalizes shorter translations. So in the details you can find in this paper. So once again, earlier in this set of causes, you saw the importance of having a single row number evaluation metric because that allows you to try out two ideas, see which one achieves the highest score, and then you know try to stick with the one that achieved the highest score. So the reason the blue score was revolutionary for machine translation was because this gave a pretty good 
by no means perfect, but pretty good single real number evaluation metric. And so that accelerated the progress of the entire field of machine translation. I hope this video gave you a sense of how the Blue School works. In practice, a few people would implement the Blue School from scratch. They're open source implementations you can download and just use to evaluate your own system. But today, Blue School is used to evaluate um, many systems that generate text, such as machine translation systems, as well as the example I showed briefly earlier of image captioning systems, where you would have a system, have a neural network generate an image caption, and then use the blue score to see how much that overlaps with maybe a reference caption or multiple reference captions that were generated by people. So the blue score is a useful single row number evaluation metric to use whenever you want your algorithm to generate a piece of text and you want to see whether it has similar meaning um, as a reference piece of text generated by humans. Uh, this is not used for speech recognition because for speech recognition, there's usually you know, one ground truth and you just use other measures to see if you got a speech transcription on pretty much exactly word for word correct. But for things like image captioning, multiple captions for a picture could be about equally good. Or for machine translation, there are multiple translations about equally good. The blue score gives you a way to evaluate that automatically and therefore speed up your algorithmic development. So with that, I hope you have a sense of how the blue score works.